precipitation bands. First, a reminder. Remember that as water heats up, it evaporates and rises into the atmosphere. And as it gets higher in the atmosphere, it starts to cool. And that cooling water vapor then condenses and precipitates. And that's going to be important, again, where there's areas of warm air rising, the water vapor condenses, and then leads to precipitation. Next, it's interesting to know that on average, any spot on Earth gets about 100 centimeters of rain. That being said, different parts of Earth get very different amounts of rain. Some get much more rain and some get much less. And it turns out the precipitation in general depends on latitude. Now for the rest of this unit, you may hear me refer to wet and dry climates. And this is not necessarily a scientific term. For our sake, we're going to say that wet climates receive at least 60 centimeters of rain. So 60 centimeters or more of precipitation. While dry climates will receive less than 60 centimeters of rain. So again, 59 centimeters or fewer of precipitation. And thinking about precipitation, I think it's interesting to look at this map. Here you're looking at areas of yellow, which represent the largest deserts on Earth. And you might start to notice that all of the deserts seem to be clustered around 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. And as a scientist, when you see a pattern like that, you begin to wonder what is causing that pattern. Which takes us to our objective. In this video, scientists will be able to understand how latitude affects precipitation patterns. Or why do we have those deserts at 30 degrees north and south? To begin understanding, we can think of Earth as just a simple sphere. If Earth was all water, well, the atmosphere over Earth would become hottest near the equator. And that air would rise, it would hit the top of the atmosphere and begin to cool down, the cooling air would sink towards the poles, and then it would go along the land and start to warm up again, rising at the equator to complete that cycle. Again, if Earth was simple, this is how air would move in the atmosphere. However, Earth is a bit more complicated, and instead of just one area where air is rising and then sinking, Earth has several of these what are called cells of air. In this image you can see the red arrows showing air that is warming up and rising, and blue arrows where air is cooling down and sinking. North of the equator there's three of these big sections of air, where there's air both rising and cooling. And in fact, generally speaking, near the equator, that pattern of air causes lots of rainfall. At about 30 degrees north, you tend to have very dry desert regions. At 60 degrees north, you have regions with some rainfall. And then at the north and south pole, at 90 degrees, you have another region of dry deserts. In fact, Antarctica is Earth's biggest desert. So why does this happen? Well, let's start at the equator. We know that at the equator, it gets direct sunlight all year long, which means that the equator is the warmest, and the air over the equator warms and rises. As that air rises, Air from north and south of the equator starts to move in to fill its place. And as the air moves in, it begins to pick up water vapor. So air that is full of water vapor rises above the equator. And as we know, the air rises, cools in the atmosphere, condenses, and rains. 
So directly over the equator, you have areas with consistent or constant rainfall all year long. Now, as the air rises, the water vapor condenses, but the air still has to go somewhere. It turns out that the air over the equator basically hits the top of the atmosphere and begins to spread out. Some air goes north and some air goes south. Now, as the air travels through the atmosphere, it begins to cool. And we know that cool air is more dense and begins to sink. So you have cool air sinking at about 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. And as that air cools and sinks, it begins to absorb water vapor because as it heats up, it begins to absorb water vapor due to evaporation. Now that air that is descending basically dries out the land at 30 degrees north and south. And then it starts traveling back towards the equator. So all of the water vapor from 30 degrees north and south starts traveling towards the equator. This causes 30 degrees north and south to be incredibly dry areas of Earth. But the air again has to keep moving. Some of the air that descends at 30 degrees north goes towards the equator, and some of the air starts going north towards 60 degrees. Air that is traveling along the land towards 60 degrees begins warming up and it's picking up water vapor. And at about 60 degrees north and south, the air is warm enough that it starts rising back into the atmosphere. And as we know, the water vapor will condense and cause precipitation. So at 60 degrees north, again, you have areas with pretty consistent rainfall. But the air has to go somewhere. Again, at 60 degrees north and south, the air hits the top of the atmosphere and splits. Some of that travels back towards 30 degrees, and some of that air travels towards the poles. The air that travels towards the poles cools in the atmosphere until it reaches the north or south pole, and then it starts to descend or travel down. And again, as the air warms, it absorbs water vapor. So the descending air basically dries out the north and south pole. And then that air travels back towards 60 degrees north or south. Here's your key ideas. Along the equator at zero degrees latitude, we have climates with consistent heavy rainfall or more than 60 centimeters of precipitation. At 30 degrees latitude, there's going to be very little precipitation, or less than 60 centimeters. At 60 degrees latitude, there will be consistent precipitation, again more than 60. And at 90 degrees latitude, there's very little precipitation, or less than 60.